Welcome back, folks. All right, so this is our midweek review for January 13, 2021. All right, so we have completed the first half or, or better parts of the first half of the week. Remaining on the calendar, we have Thursday, 8.30 a.m., medium impact, unemployment claims for the dollar. And in 12.30 p.m., Fed Chair Powell will be speaking. It's high impact. So there'll probably be some movement based on what he has to say there. And then Friday, we have high impact core retail sales for the dollar for 8.30 a.m. New York session. All right, so this is going to be brief. I believe we have seen enough for this particular week, uh, given the state of affairs in the U.S., uh, everyone's waiting for the finalization of the inauguration of Joe Biden. And also we have the looming impeachment 2.0 for Donald Trump. So all of that has come together as a perfect storm with January beginning of the year where we look for and anticipate the next coming months worth of directional bias and or market structure and then we have the the continuous drama around the u.s election so it has a lot of folks on the sidelines waiting for that to apparently get behind us before they allocate any kind of significant funds to risk with that said I want to take a look at the dollar index here and notice we're not looking at the monthly and weekly because we've already annotated the charts relative to those time frames and we're sticking with that narrative. The weekly gap in here in the form of a fair value gap, uh, we're still looking at that as a potential draw on liquidity and we would have to get above the equilibrium of this range high and this range low. Now on Monday, we had price run up initially, and then yesterday we had it come back a little bit, and then today we opened softer, but came back a little bit more bullish than what we saw on Tuesday. Uh, not that it made a higher high than Tuesday's data, but it's sh showing a willingness to want to go higher. Now we're going to see if it wants to do that, because we did in fact come back down into this small little imbalance here, and then rallied up. So we're going to wait to see if it has the conviction to go higher. There should not be any trading right now on your part. So if you're in here trying to execute, you're doing it wrong. Okay. We're just monitoring and studying. This is Intel month. Okay. So we're trying to get uh, some Intel on our adversary. Okay. The marketplace. So we're going to be continuously looking to see if it does in fact want to trade higher. Now, if we lose today's low, and this is important, if we take out today's low, then we're probably going to make a run for this low here. And all of this may be in vain. In other words, it's not likely to occur. But we're going to give it the benefit of the doubt until it takes out today's low. Moving on into the hourly chart for dollar index, you can see we have a breaker, which are these consecutive up close candles prior to this run lower. So you have a low, high, lower low. All these up close candles, that's your range projected in the future. And the mean threshold. Oh, I just realized that I did not show you a blank chart. <laughs> well, we're going to have to do it on the next video, and we'll start it then. Um, I completely lost my train of thought, and I don't want to start this video up because I don't have the time to get through another rendition of this, put it that way. So we'll have to just do it going forward. I'll make a mental note and also write it up in my notes on my charts that I have to give you a clean chart and then 
you can test yourself. But uh, it's not so important right now because we're really not anticipating anything to participate in. But where we have these up close candles, that's your bullish breaker, extend that in time. The mean threshold or midpoint of that is seen in here. And the market did in fact trade down to that and bounced. These levels in here, I'm going to count you to go back and look at several months ago, we had a imbalance on our chart and these levels are those imbalance levels. And you can see how they came back into importance again, came back down into here, consequent encroachment, broke out of it, came back up in small little imbalance here with a bearish order block and sells off to the mean threshold and then bounces. So again, I want to see if it has the willingness to want to stay above today's low. As long as it does that, then we'll be looking for that daily fair value gap to be uh, a draw on liquidity for dollar. On the 15 minute time frame, you can see the order block here, bearish order block, hits it, breaks lower, comes back up, hits another bearish order block mean threshold and trades down into the mean threshold of the breaker, which we can now look at this one single candle, which is the uppermost candle in this series of up close candles that makes the peak or the, the high in the breaker pattern. That range extended out in time, it's shaded. You can see we go below the mean threshold a little bit and it's fine, but it accumulates, runs some sell side out here with this run and then sends it higher. Now, I don't personally know, like if I had a gun to my head and said, hey, Huddleston, let's see what it is. Is it going to be bearish or bullish? I don't know. <laughs> it could be argued on both sides. Uh, and this is what I meant the other day on my community tab. If And you've all been exposed to this too in teachings in the mentorship. If your analysis lends well to both sides or can be argued on both sides, that's the clearest indication that you're not in high probability conditions. That's as simple as that. And while it has shown a willingness to turn on things that you've learned, uh, it's important to note also that we are not in a time where we want to be assuming risk. Okay, so let the inauguration get behind us. Let whatever tomfoolery or drama that's going to happen or not happen uh, present itself. And then after the dust settles, we move into February we'll have a better climate or environment to participate. But right now, we're just observing, taking notes, seeing what's available in terms of what price has done, how's it respecting PD arrays, how's it operating after it runs into liquidity or if it runs into liquidity. But nonetheless, uh, the higher price run on dollar still is likely to occur, in my opinion. We're gonna give it room to do that, but again, Today's low on the 13th of January, 2021, if that low is violated in any way, not just on a closing basis, if it breaks below it, then that's enough for me to say, okay, I have to reevaluate and see what happens because I would have to push my bullishness away from the near term. And this little annotation here is just to remind you to project that gap in the future and we'll see potential sensitivity around this as well. Okay. Let's move on over to Euro. All right, so here's the daily chart for Euro. And I mentioned that I like uh, the 2050 level. That's around this here, and it could potentially go a little bit deeper if we do see that run higher on dollar into that daily outline. If we do break lower, fair value gap, in the form of a buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency here with sell side liquidity. This is the draw on liquidity on the very, very near term. We've had a run, a higher run, and a higher run, and a higher run. So we had four attempts to go higher, then we traded lower. So we're using this low here as a breaker. It's showing a willingness to show its hand as not willing to want to rally into that. Now, if again, just the opposite of what we were outlining for the dollar, if we take the high out on your dollar here, on Wednesday's high, then obviously I have to reconsider my uh, opinion about what may or may not be transpiring in Euro. But for now, I'm going to stick with the narrative 
that we're probably going to want to run down into this level here. Does it get there? I don't know, but we'll watch this and see if that's the case. Hourly 60 minute chart for Euro. Okay, you can see again the rejection block. All the things that were in the previous chart I have dimmed, so they're no longer the active things. The active thing is in color, so we're seeing that breaker again that we were looking at here. It moved away from that institutional order flow entry drill. Mitigation block sells off, runs the sell side liquidity we were looking for, made a higher low, ran out that low, but kept this low here rally back up into the breaker and then trade it softer and we're going to look to see if we can get back below this sell side liquidity pool here and also into that daily fair value gap buy side amount sell side efficiency on its daily chart and here is the 15 minute time frame you can see the small little imbalance in here with the last up close candle that is your bearish order block within a fair value gap and breaker and it's also a smaller breaker, which I failed to mention that in the hourly chart, but you can see that it's also what's happening here. Market breaks down and gave you a range of 80 pips. So you had a range of 80 pips and again, another range of 80 pips with the direction uh, reaching for, again, the sell side liquidity resting below this level here. And we had two attempts to do that. So that in itself is enough because we're looking for what if we're trying to do one shot one kill setups 50 to 75 pips is my personal objective but you can certainly find 25 pips in both this run and or the run right from the beginning of the week so we're at wednesday we're in an uncertain time period we don't push a trade if it was a time in the year where we would not be having all of these uncertainties and concerns that would keep us on the sideline then we would be looking to potentially you know, work towards that sell side liquidity and imbalance on the daily chart for euro but because we've already had opportunities to see what we would reasonably expect on a one shot one kill and or a 25 pip trade for for the week we don't go in again to gamble okay so it's given us what we were looking for two instances of it working off of pd arrays have outlined and you can see that this is what happens after you annotate your chart and you, you walk it forward. You see how does it react going in the future. This is not random, okay? This has nothing to do with support and resistance. It's the PD array matrix that the algorithm is working off of and in seeking liquidity. All right, and then moving into the British pound, this is the daily chart. I'm gonna keep this really, really simple because again, I had a question mark on the last uh, discussion about British pound. I just don't trust it. So we have this candle right here. We have the closing price there. That's the rejection block. It trades to it and through it. And we have the order block here that's bullish. Extend that out in time. It traded to it and then reacted off of that. Apart from that, I don't see anything else in this price action that is worth noting. Moving on into the hourly chart, everything again, except for this little area here, has been dimmed out. I mentioned that we were gonna trade into this fair value gap, and if it got over excited, we would clear up some of the liquidity resting below here. Again, go back and watch the video, okay? This is also why I tell you to download the video because I cannot change it or edit it if you download it. Not that you should be, at this point, wondering if I'm going to go and do it, okay, because I don't have time to go back and edit anything. So whatever happens, just like this video, I, I should have had empty charts, but I failed in that regard. But I'm not going to edit it. It's going to be what it is. So just like previous uh, recordings uh, done in the 2016 year and 2017 and 18 and 19 and 20, and I'm sure I'll make mistakes in 2021. I'm human. Uh, once I make the video and I upload it, it's there. I can't change it, I can't edit it. So it keeps me honest, it shows a, uh, a level of character in me, hopefully, that you can uh, appreciate that this is what it is, and I co-sign, and it's either I'm right or I'm wrong. But I mentioned that we would see the market trade lower into the fair value gap and also this liquidity pool here. And what you know, it, it trades down into it. 
clears it up, runs back up, accumulates with inside the fair value gap. Now, it's also a breaker, okay, because we have a low, a high, a lower low. We break through, consolidate inside the fair value gap. And then all of this tearing off into this old order flow, does it have the moxie to get through this buy side liquidity, which is not being annotated, but I'm drawing your uh, eye to this reference point of here and this here. So we have a lower high still than this one. So it could, you know, do things that would be, again, hard to read for me personally. And this is why I said I don't like this pair right now. I don't trust it. It's hands off. All kinds of Brexit stuff. Everything that's going on. And for the charter members that are living in the UK, um, I'm going to open up an area on the forum uh, for, like, Brexit discussions. I would be really interested in seeing and reading whatever you guys want to contribute to the, the group. Now, I know some of you that are not charter members are going to be like, oh, that's not fair. Well, it is fair because you're not supposed to be participating in the forum. You, you have work to do with the lessons. But for a conversational point for charter members and for me, uh, it would be a way for me to get intel that, because I don't sit down and watch news. I don't have the time to digest all that and weed out the crap. But I've seen some articles shared to me by friends and, and associates of, of mine that there's some really crazy stuff going on over in the UK. Okay. And as far as like the lockdowns and you can only see one person, <laughs> it sounds like madness, but uh, I don't know if there's any truth to it. So it's hard to get a good read on what we have in information in the U S versus someone that's over there living doing, you know, doing the day by day thing. So I'd like to keep a, a closer eye on what's going on over there. Maybe that might help me get a, a, an opinion on British pound, but this pair may end up becoming a pair that I put on the sidelines and ring in another type of currency or another market, but we'll see. All right. So let's go into the 15 minute time frame. wrap this video up. Nothing really terribly different from what was shown on the hourly chart. Just want to show you the accumulation that took place in here. And this is how I have my own personal chart. Notice I don't have any annotations in here. Uh, I'm going to leave room for you to do that with your institutional order flow entry drill annotations. But I don't want to do it because it gives the impression that I anticipated this type of run when I didn't. The only thing I anticipated was a run down to the fair value gap. And then if it went lower, it would go right to this area of liquidity, and it, which it did. So all of this is a no participation on my part. I don't get any kind of credit for that. And who cares? But you would still study all this and annotate it the way you would annotate it. The breaker still has uh, yet to be really breached and, and worked off of. I think that still might be in the cards, and we'll see what happens. And apart from that, I'm going to keep it where we are here, not give any more than what we've already stated. Sidelines, that's the, that's the way to go right now. Just relax. Let the U.S. elections pan out that whatever inauguration you know whatever's going to happen on the 20th of january after that we're left with whatever happens and then we move into february that's a normal routine for me to return to participation and we'll see what happens uh given those uh factors okay so and talk, talk to you this weekend be safe do not trade